Guys, what's up? Hey, guys. Hey. What's up? I had a friend ask me to make a video about uh, how I personally ink in Manga Studio. So I'm going to do a quick short video showing you what I've learned. Um, this is, of course, by no means the only way you can do it. Everybody is a special snowflake and should ink their own way. But whether you're going to use Manga Studio to do comics or manga or just standalone illustrations, I think if you want to have a, a, a great look, uh, a great inked look, uh, there's really no better program. Um, I know I, I and, my, and my friend both use uh, Photoshop and we use... Uh, uh, Lazy Nizumi, which is a, a fantastic plugin, but Photoshop itself is not built to be used as an inking platform, so there's there's problems even with that. Now, Lazy Nizumi is still great for stuff like uh, drawing perspective lines and, and other things like that. Um, it's well worth it, but um, in terms of inking, it really can't get any better than Manga Studio. So I'm just going to go through and show you guys um, a couple points about um, inking in Manga Studio, and um, especially if you're not familiar with um, how Manga Studio works. It's a little different than Photoshop or, or Illustrator. Illustrator is also a fine program to do inking in. I wouldn't because it's kind of cumbersome and it's more like design than inking. And, you know, come on, we want to be artistic. So uh, I personally like to use Manga Studio. And right now you can see I'm using Manga, Stu Manga Studio EX. It's the pro version. You can use the regular one. It's fine. The pro version is really only if you're going to if you plan on uh, doing books and, and things like that, in that case, it's great. But you can do all, you should, you know, don't take my word for it, but you should be able to do pretty much everything you can do that I'm going to show you today in the regular version, which I think is only like 50 bucks. And it's probably less in euros, but um, it's great. So anyways, I'm going to start out with uh, the difference between vector and raster layers. Now, if you're a designer or if you've been working on computers for any amount of time, you know that vector and raster are the two different ways that we can make images. Raster is images based on pixels, and vector is images that are based on math. Maths, as they would say in Europe. Um, the, the, how it's used here is, it's maybe not how you think. Um, you, vector is sort of a little misleading. Vector basically just means that their internal algorithms can read those lines and can interact with those lines in different ways. Um, as far as, and I will cover this later, but as far as I know, there's no way to export line work to an AI, which you shouldn't need to do anyways. If you're doing illustrations and stuff for graphic design or for logos and stuff, then I would recommend using Illustrator. But for artistic endeavors, um, this is where it's at. So right now I've got my kind of um, regular, my sketch that I brought in. It's not complete, and I'm just working on it um, as a side project, but it's complete enough to where I can kind of ink over it so you guys can see. Um, so I brought that in. I also added a white layer here. Um, I don't like, because if you take it away, it kind of looks like that, and it's really hard to see. Um, it, so I don't like that. Um, I brought this, this it's, a, it's a TIFF in from Sketchbook, so that's why it has a transparent background. But if you just scan in something that you've drawn or you drew it in Photoshop with a white background or something, then it's going to have that white background anyway, so you won't need to worry about it. But I just created a, a white layer and, and locked it. So I've created two layers here. Um, you can make a raster or a vector. I've created two layers here, and basically, um, you can tell something's vector because it's got this little icon right here. Um, now, with inking on the raster layer, it works pretty much identically. So I'm going to draw just like a rough line here. So great, looks great, right? Okay. Now, if I switch over to vector, it pretty much looks the same. You really can't tell a difference, and even if you zoom way in. They look pretty much identical. And that's what I mean when I say that vector, this vector line here, is not truly vector in the way that design professionals know it. It is made of bitmaps. But there's a big difference, and I'm going to show that to you here in just a second. So um, one of the big differences is raster, um, it can't really be interacted with. So if I come up and grab my operator tool up here, and I come down, and I'm making sure that I'm on the raster layer. Um, oops, the wrong thing. There we go. Yeah, see, I can drag it around, great. But I mean, I can do the same thing in Photoshop, right? I can just drag the layer around. But if I come over here to my vector and I select it, oh, it's alive. I've got all these great points. And I can come and modify these lines. Great. I can delete lines. Um, it's very similar to Illustrator. But again, this is just really a bitmap line that Manga Studio keeps track of with points. I don't know how they do it. But that's not my job to know. So. That is the most rudimentary difference between inking and raster and inking and vector. So the question is, 
you're asking me, you say, Kyle, why would I ever want to use a raster, uh, raster ink layer? And the answer is you wouldn't. Just don't. It's a bad idea, man. It looks bad. Um, <laughs> there's a, a couple of good things about a vector. Um, so if I go back and I bring back my raster layer, and I come over here in my little eraser, got a bunch of different erasers, got a hard eraser here, and I can, yay, great, fantastic. Um, but let's say I've got something a little more complicated, and let's say I've got like a bunch of shapes and some kind of complex crap. And I want to come in and say, oh, no, I don't need all that. I just, oh, oh, I just wanted to, okay, well, I wanted to delete this. And, okay, and I, I need to, to zoom in because I need to, okay, and I need to, uh, okay. Okay, great. Well, okay, well, you know what? It's it's fine. They're not going to care. And that is what separates professionals from uh, amateurs. I'm not saying I'm a professional. <laughs> um, but when you're doing something for a client, you need to make sure it looks great. And if it's just for your own project, that's fine. But even then, I think you should apply high standards. So that looks terrible, and it's really hard. So let's say I wanted to come in here and just erase this part. Like, let's say this is part of a perspective grid, and I needed to erase all the extra parts, and it's like, oh, that's tough. Uh, okay, I kind of got it, but that took me forever. Did you see how many seconds that took me? It may not seem like a lot, but it was. So let's say I want to erase something on my vector line and I come down here and we're going to just kind of do roughly the same same stuff okay so I need to come down here and I need to erase let's say I need to erase this center part right here so come down and I come to my eraser and really with vector you only want to use the vector eraser and you want to make sure that this is checked on I don't know what purpose it has if it's checked off but if you check it on it works great now watch so I've got three different options and my first one is called Erase Touching Part, and that's pretty much what I just showed you. Great. Fantastic. I think it might snap a little bit, yeah, to clean it up a little bit, but I mean, it's basically the same thing as what we had up here. It's not really much point. This last one, overall line, it's pretty neat. Oh, it's gone. Pretty cool, huh? Oh, that line's gone. We need to erase all this junk. You just have to touch it with the eraser. Just a touch. Whoop. Whoop. It's gone. Crazy magic. I don't know how they do it, but they do it, and that's all that matters. So that's cool. But my favorite is the erasing the uh, intersection, and this is great for when it comes to uh, perspective grids and stuff like that. So let's say I want to clean these edges up. I just kind of gently swipe through, and those edges are gone. I need to erase this line right here without touching the circle. Oh, it's gone. Oh, that one too. Oh my gosh. Great. Super. That saves a ton of time. Yeah, look, I mean, this took me, hmm, what, not even a second to erase all this stuff if I didn't need it. Or this. Yeah, that took like a second. Um, you'll want to make sure that the lines are kind of, that they are enclosed. Like if this, uh, if this part right here, yeah, I'll switch to... I'll switch to this. Okay, it can be it can get kind of tricky if you're not careful. Um, and you see that the program does kind of fight you a little bit sometimes with the vector eraser because it's trying to correct for what it thinks you're trying to do. But trust me, it's a lot better than than uh, erasing in in raster. Um, so what I was trying to show you is let's say this isn't completely closed. And we don't know that. Now, that's very obvious, but it can get kind of uh, down to the nitty-gritty. So if you delete that, oh, the entire line's gone. So you just want to be careful with that. Um, okay, so that being done, I'm going to erase that and make a new layer. And I'm going to get rid of that nasty raster layer. Naster. Oh, naster. Naster raster. Okay, we have a couple different kinds of pens here in our pen menu. We've got the mapping pen is great. It's kind of your average pen. Um, it's always going to pretty much end in a nice tapered line most of the time. And that's fine. Um, we've got the turnip pen, which is just kind of like a big pen. So it doesn't really 
there's not really any pressure control. Like I'm pressing as light as I can right here and as hard as I can right here and then going back to light. So as you can see, it's kind of just like the default Photoshop brush. It's not, there's not much to it. We've got the calligraphy brush. I'm gonna size that down a little bit. Woo! So I can write my name. Kyle is great. And it looks like I'm a Renaissance dork. So that's cool. Uh, I haven't found a use for that. Then I've got the textured line, so if you're kind of trying to do something a little bit, uh, or the four effect line, I'm sorry. And what this does is it kind of simulates the pen pressure. So I guess if you didn't have a tablet and you were inking with a mouse, which you can do, it would kind of simulate pressure. But oh, it, it looks simulated, though. Like, that looks like you had a computer. It kind of looks like, and I'm going to get in trouble for saying this, it kind of looks a little bit like uh, Illustrator's inking like when you ink something in illustrator for the first time and you just kind of tell illustrator to simulate pressure and you don't like use the brush tool in illustrator that's kind of what this looks like so it doesn't look super i mean i guess if that's the style you're going for fine but i don't like it i'm not going to ever use it then you got the textured pen which is kind of cool um just kind of if you need a grungy look and again, all these are vector, so they will all work with the um, vector eraser and such. So the texture one's a little difficult because it kind of it counts all these little notches and stuff as part of the overall construction. It's not actually just an effect. So you might get like what I had up here, like how this, some of the stayed. You might get that, but I don't see using this a whole lot. So I'll go back up to my brushes. And the one I use all the time, and it's got the little gear next to it, is the G pen. And I love it because it's for G's. So I typically use it about 8.7 points when I'm doing um, comic work. Um, I find that's a pretty decent size to get lines that uh, look nice, but they're not. They don't draw a lot of attention to themselves. I might. I think in the future I am going to start going up a, a couple point sizes a little bit bigger, just to kind of be able to give myself a little bit more uh, room to add some flourish. But for right now, I'm using 8.7, and then like so for the outside lines, I use 8.7. And then for the inside lines, I go down to like seven. Yeah. Um, and then if you switch off the tool and come back, and that's something that also kind of annoys people is when they switch tools and they come back, the tools presets will be all done. But that's when you come in and you, you say, um, you, uh, you can actually save the presets. So if you lock the sub tool, or if you make changes and then lock the tool, it'll always be on that. So if I unlocked it and changed it to 18 and then locked it and then, yeah, and I come back, it's always going to be 18. Yeah, and I hate that. So now i got to go back to 8.7. And I lock the sub tool. Okay. So that's how you kind of take care of that. But... Uh, Uh, I also like the G pen because it's pressure sensitive. So if I am pressing really lightly here and then really hard here and then down to light again, it's a much more natural kind of look. Pressing, not pressing, pressing, not pressing, and breathe out. So that's really nice. We've got some options here. You can change the opacity. I have not messed with this. I'm sure there's plenty of good situations where you could use the opacity, but I just haven't had a chance to play with it. And to aliasing, I usually keep it on, uh, m you know, middle or strong. It's kind of a cheat way. Also, it can kind of cause problems. If you use Photoshop to do your color flatting and you come in and use a uh, an automatic tool like, um, oh, geez, I don't know the name. The, there's, there's a plug-in for Photoshop that's actually really good for doing uh, really quick color flatting, but it has problems when you do anti-aliasing, so you have to like um, make it bitmap or something, but uh, I think generally it's worth it to have anti-aliasing on a strong or middle, and basically the difference is there's a line, there's a line, and obviously one looks a lot smoother. I think unless you're going for some special effect, you want it to look a lot smoother. Um, stabilization is nice, Stabilization is kind of also another cheat, but I use it because I am not a professional inker. So here's a line without much stabilization. Here's a line with a lot of stabilization. This one's not, it's a little harder to tell the difference, but if I do this, yeah. Oops, that's what the inking. 
Sorry about that. Anti aliasing sign. I'm terrible. I'm sorry, guys. Okay, here's with the stabilization. Here's with not much stabilization. Uh, basically, it just kind of cleans up your lines and makes your lines look a little bit nicer, neater. I would always have them on. And vector magnet is one of my favorite parts of inking in Manga Studio. So, let's say I come up here. And I have my vector magnet turned off. By default, it is off. I would recommend turning it on and saving your little presets. So, uh, let's say I have a line here and a line here and a line here. These are all going to be treated as separate lines by Manga Studio. And they're obviously, I mean, they're separate lines, right? Okay. But if I come in and turn my vector magnet on, turn all the way up. See how that adjusted? Do it again. It's not adjusting. Oh, there, see, there's a little bit of a change. Okay, and these are all going to be treated as one. They should be treated as one big piece. No, it's not working. <laughs> it's trying to make me look like a fool. Turn it on. <laughs> Basically, that's my recommendation: is turn it on. You'll just you'll be you'll be thankful that it's on. Um, but I find this really useful for when you need to do kind of like some sketchy. There you go. See, now it's doing it. We need to do some sketchy sketch lines. But you still want it to look nice. You don't want it to look like sketchy, sketch, unconnected lines. So come in and you turn on your vector magnet. Yeah, and it corrects some of it for you. It's just another way to kind of get some assistance from the computer. Or I say, turn it on. Okay. Um, that's basically it for the pens. Now, also part of inking, and this is um, sort of not super related, but I consider it part of inking, is doing like your fills and your texturing and stuff. I mean, because those aren't colors, and those are things that Manga Studio can do decently well. So I'll kind of go over those here. So um, let's say I'm going to select my marquee tool here. Let's say my lasso marquee. Let's say I want to come in and I want to have uh, a little bit of shading on her nose. And I want to use kind of like um, some hatching. There's also, besides your pens, you can also use markers. Now, uh, this Millie pen, it might as well just be a small pen. Excuse me. And still here on the vector layer, or make another one, and come in and just kind of. Yeah, I like that. Okay. And deselect. Since it is vector, I can come in here and move any one of these lines. I don't know why you would, but you can come in and move any of these lines if you want to move them around, shake things up. Um, now, if I get rid of this, and then let's say I want to have just a pure black fill. I'm going to come back to my marker. I'm going to go to the fill in mono pen, and I'm going to go back to my layer, and I'm going to fill it in. Looks great, right? But watch what happens when I let go. Ah! Ah, as Kathy might say. I don't know why that happens. There's a way you can change, you can help it with masks, but it's kind of an extra step. And that's kind of the only thing I wish was really different about Monk Studio is that that didn't happen. So what I do is I make a raster layer for the fills and do that because see, look, they behaved. You can't, you can't <laughs> change the points on these, but I, I mean, like at this point, what's the? It doesn't really matter because it's just a big solid shape that you can move around. And if you really need to move just only certain pieces of it. You could just, you know, do that, just like Photoshop. And the same thing goes for uh, other kinds of fills. So, like, let's say you want some some cool grungy texture, you come to your airbrush, and you got all these. I like to use Droplet. That's kind of nice. I guess you could use it for like freckles or something. But I mean, come on, be serious. Uh, we don't play games. Freckles are a game. All right. Then you can also come up here to your brushes menu and go to India Ink, and there's all kinds of cool little options. I use Darker Bleed a lot for um, grungy backgrounds. This one will eat a ton of system resources, though. So if you're doing a big area, just be patient. And that's definitely something also that you want to do in uh, Raster, because it'll kind of do that weird fill the whole area thing. But this will chug a lot of system resources, because it's a lot of particles. And you can also increase the amount of particles if you want. I think the default is fine. So, all right. 
So let's say I've got my beautiful ink work here. And take that. And um, I'm not satisfied with it. Well, another great thing about Manga Studio is you can come in here and correct your lines on your, on your uh, pen work. This menu, I actually moved it up. It is down here near the paintbrush, I don't, or the paint bucket, or actually I think it's down here below fonts. I don't know why, but I moved it up here because you can just drag and, and move things around. I moved it up here because it needs to be near the pen because that's where it's going to live, and that's where the pen lives. So we've got all kinds of options here. Control point is pretty basic. It's uh, If you like Illustrator and you like dealing with lots of points, good on you, but you can add control points, and you can move them around, and it's really boring and okay so that's really boring but you can do it that way I'm not gonna judge you I don't know you so I can't judge you but uh, you can do that if you want to modify your lines and you know straighten some things out or whatever what have you oh god that's terrible okay there we go you can uh, pinch the control lines which is kind of a weird <laughs> way of moving around and then you can make your eyebrows go like ah, see ah, ah. big nose eh? oh, I can't increase the brush <laughs> It's funny. Oh, I think you can grab two lines at the same time. No, you can't. Okay, it's only one print, one line. Whatever. You can still make your character in a Humphrey Bogart movie. Arr, arr. Um, you can uh, simplify your vector line, and basically that just kind of irons out kinks and makes it look a little bit smoother. That's nice. I don't typically use that because I like to <coughs> listen to me. I like to try to get right the first time. <laughs> uh. So, uh, but if you need to, you can correct it. <laughs> and there's no problem with that. Uh, connect vector line. Um, this one is uh, not one I use a whole lot because I use the the uh, the uh, vector magnet. But like, let's say, yeah, oops, I need to connect these. So I want to come in here and I'm going to do a connect vector line. And you want to make sure that the connect line is kind of pumped all the way up, because otherwise you might not see it. And it gives you some strange results sometimes. Um, let me see if I can get it to do something not strange. There we go. Now let's come back in here. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so that's basically what you're doing. And Manga Studio should treat that as one line now, if it does. So, huzzah. I, I think it looks fine without it. If you really need to, <coughs> like I mentioned, that Photoshop software that flats for you, you might need to connect all your vector lines because they need to be closed spaces for the flatting to work. So that's where this can come in handy. Um, correcting vector line width, this one's one of my favorites. Really, you're going to live in these uh, two presets down here. So you, you can thicken the width. So let's say I want to thicken the cheek because that's nice. I come in here and just paint, and it thickens it for me. Oh, isn't that nice? Or, you know, over here. And it kind of works in a radius, and you kind of paint it along where you want it to be thicker. Um, it's very nice. It's definitely worth something worth playing around with. I saw this and I was blown away, and that's why I decided I needed to get this software because I was like, whoa, like I don't know anything that can do that that easily. Um, definitely not something that Photoshop can really do. So once you lay down your lines, they're kind of down, unless you want to go back and painstakingly <laughs> paint in thickness to the lines. You can also thin the width of the lines. So, mm, okay. And that one's you have to paint a little bit harder. Now, it, you got to be careful because, yeah, you can get stuff like this right here. It doesn't look great, but. Yeah, so that's nice. So another reason why I love the G Pen because even if you aren't satisfied with your lines the first time, you can kind of fix them up. So yeah, that's pretty neat. You can scale up and down the width. Um, I haven't really found that to be very useful. It just kind of does the same thing as these up here. I'm sure there's some special reason. You can fix the width. Um, that kind of just defaults the line width to a standard width. So if you want it to look like a computer drew it. Then that's your tool. Yeah, it just makes it's kind of like the make things look worse tool. So you can also tell it to process the whole line. I don't know what the point of that is, unless you want the whole line to be um, a certain, <laughs> unless you're going for like a very, uh, yeah. See, okay, there's no reason why. Um, you can also redraw the vector line. So let's say I want to come up here and I want this to be longer. Hey oh. Whoa, or you can kind of connect them yourself. They won't be connect. I mean, they, Manga Studio won't think those are connected, but they look like they are. So Photoshop would probably think they are for that flatting. So that'd be nice. But you don't want to go through the hassle of connecting them. So you can go like that. Yeah, not bad. You can also 
You can't really make your eye character's eyebrows wiggle, but you can make them look really sharp. Arr. Oh, I get you. Um, and then you can also kind of, this is a little bit more intuitive way, and by intuitive I mean difficult to master. I don't use it, but you can kind of thicken it as you go along. And this is pressure sensitive, so if I don't put much pressure, it's not going to do much, or it might even thin it out. But if I put a lot of pressure, whoa, it's like she's got a beard. You did notice it was she, right? No, it probably wasn't very obvious. And this is kind of cool. It takes practice, and I don't recommend. There's easier ways to do it, but if you want a certain look, um, then this would be this would be how you do that. So that's pretty much how I ink um, a terrifying person. Like I said, there's not really a good way to export this, so you just have like a vector path because, like I said, it's not truly vector. You zoom in all the way, and you got jaggies, because it's not technically vector. Um, you're really only supposed to work with this inside Manga Studio. I mean, of course, if you save this as a as a uh, LIB, I think is their format, uh, then obviously you'll always be able to go back and mess with the lines and stuff, and you know, delete lines and and what have you. You can also delete them that way if you really want to. Um. You can always go in and do that. Um, if you save them out, they'll look pretty nice. They're not going to obviously be vector, because if you save them to Photoshop, they're going to get flattened. But they will look very nice. In my experience, um, exported lines typically look very nice, especially when printed out on a good printer. They look very nice. So, I mean, there's no real reason not to use vector. There's no reason to use raster over the vector unless you're doing fills. So that's pretty much been how I work with my vectors. Um, if you guys have any questions or anything... Keep in mind, I'm not the expert, but this is for a friend. So, hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, have a great day. Have a great holiday season. And by holiday, I mean Halloween. So, happy Halloween, and if you don't celebrate, then um, you're dead to me. All right, goodbye.